I'm Claire Pentecost, and, and I named my talk Signing Being, Materializing the Sign, because my work, um, you know, I'm really a pretty old-fashioned artist, and I use materials to uh, propose things on a symbolic level. Um, so let's see where to start. Okay, I'm starting with this image I made with the ancient technology of drawing with a pencil. Um, and what you see here is the visage of uh, Franz Kafka, um, who I'm sure you all know. And in the foreground is Red Peter, which is a character in his story, A Report to an Academy. Red Peter is an ape who became a human. He's still an ape, but he can talk and consort with humans. And um, I think I wanted to start with this because I come to you as Red Peter um, to remind you of our animal origins. Um, and he, this, one of these quotes from the story is, everyone who walks this earth feels a tickling at his heels. Um, so, you know, he doesn't really explain what that is. What is that tickling at our heels? It's the earth our, itself, maybe, um, from which we come, or it is our animal ancestors, or perhaps it is death. Here's a scan of a sketch I made in a little sketchbook. This is a portrait of my brother, my dear brother Mark, on his deathbed. And um, for me, this is the tickling. Death. This is, this is what it is to be material, um, is that we are transient. And, um, and it's such a simple sketch, but um, to me, it, it, trans, it transmits this idea of like the life gone out. And if you've ever been with someone who died, you know that image of when the life deserts the material. Um, it's, it's so amazing. Um, and then what happens to the remains? Well, we've talked a lot about bacteria. And um, the microbes, of course, take care of the dead <laughs> and feed life, new life with it, recycle the nutrients. And uh, you know, if it weren't for the microbial life, we would be uh, 10 stories high in dead things, right? Uh, but instead, um, we're used to feed new life. Um, and this is a picture I took in my microscope. Um, and where that happens usually is in the soil. I'm really interested in soil, and I've studied soil uh, biology because there's an amazing cosmos under our feet. What is soil? It is um, sand, silt, and clay, which just refers to particle size, inhabited by um, all kinds of life, interdependent life cycles. Um, you have amoeba, you have uh, protozoa, you have fungus and flagellites and nematodes, and here it is, this is the good stuff. Um, mycorrhizal uh, hyphae fungus um, that communicates between plants and uh, brings um, water, nutrients um, at the plant's uh, b bidding, basically. The plant controls how, uh, how much it is nurtured. Um, and this one, see it's moving. <laughs> this kind of microscopy, um, your, your sample, your soil sample is actually still alive for a little while, while you're looking at it. And so actually this would all be moving. I mean, I had a video, but for time's sake, I didn't. And see these clumps, these amber clumps? This is um, bacteria that glues itself to each other. And um, so they make these micro aggregates. And this, in fact, produces good soil structure, because you need uh, air, oxygen, and water to circulate in the soil. And I used to think it was just the particle size, but actually the, bi the biology makes the good structure, um, which I think is cool. And also, by the way, the bodies of the bacteria is the best place to store your nitrogen. It won't leach out like uh, synthetic nitrogen. Um, OK, so we've been talking a lot about bacteria. I got really interested in um, you know, this kind of latest wave of medicine is um, especially treating the autoimmune disorders that are prevalent and growing in affluent countries. They're not appearing in uh, less developed countries. Um, so we see these, this kind of press over the last three years 
microbes, the trillions of creatures, governing your health, germs are us, some of my best friends are germs. You know, it's like a big reversal of all the anti, all, all the microbicidal soaps and pillows, et cetera. Um, and this is the shot I like with the kid in the dirt, right? Because um, there is a continuum between the good stuff, the good microbial life in soil, and that in, in our bodies, right? And um, what they have learned is that the, the bacteria in your body actually teaches your immune system to regulate itself in the developing child. So it's very important that children be exposed to a lot of different kinds of bacteria. So I wanted to make this point. Um, so I made a, an installation called Old Friends and Unloved Others. And um, it's like an apothecary or a pharmacy um, where I collected all these kind of uh, jars and uh, vessels. Um, and inside the vessels are dirt. Um, it's soil, and as you can see, there are little labels because all the soil comes from very particular places because soil is local. I mean, the soil in your yard is going to be different from the soil in my yard because soil has history, um, and that really fascinates me. Um, and you can kind of inoculate your soil with a better soil. <laughs> um, and in the middle of this table here in the dark panel is a worm bin because people that go to openings really like to be near worms, but they don't like to touch them. But I have found they really like to be near worms. And um, it's a, yeah, it's with some composting. And here you could like lift the bell jar and take in the aroma because different soils have distinct uh, aromas. Um, it's part of their distinction. And then um, these images back here, kind of blurry, are soil chromatography, where you imbue the filter paper with a sodium, no, a, a silver nitrate solution, and then um, wick up you know, a soil sample, and it makes a different pattern. Every soil makes a different pattern. It's really, it's really marvelous. And um, that's me on the floor while I'm doing this installation, because this week, it, this was in London at Whitechapel, and um, I had the most ungodly pain in my lower back. Um, I'd never had back problems. Went to the doctor, went to the chiropractor. They all said, most common complaint in America, you have a slip disc. It's pressing the nerve. It's going to work itself out. Um, but the chiropractor gave me exercises, and the doctor gave me drugs. And um, there I am doing my exercises. But by the end of the week, I was really crippled. I was in a wheelchair. And um, what I found, the third time I went to a hospital, somebody took a blood test, and my immune system was going crazy. And I had a staph infection in my spine. Um, where did I get that? At the hospital. That's usually where people get these. Um, I had been treated for something else, for cancer. And um, so you can see that between four and five, that white area. Um, now, why am I including this? Because you know, I'm, I'm getting all cozy with the bacteria, right? And I'm emphasizing all this friendly bacteria and how important it is. And I, lest you think that I think it's all friendly out there. Um, I, this was a great cosmic kind of kick in the ass. You know, that like I'm making this installation and I almost die, right? From, from a very common bacteria that's on our skin. But if your immune system's down and it gets in the wrong place, you're in trouble. OK, so I missed that show because I was in the hospital. And so I did it again in Chicago with Chicago soils. And there, since I was in residence, um, people could bring their soil samples. And we looked to see what kind of biology they had. Um, OK, here's another kind of um, miniature life. Um, these are microfossils. And this is what, um, this is actually, these are the bodies that are compressed to make petroleum. Um, so this is also is kind of inside us, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and this is the way we practice ag agriculture. It's very fossil fuel intensive. Um, the artificial fertilizer, we, you need fossil fuels to make it. Uh, the pesticides, the herbicides, the mechanization, et cetera. And we actually spend about 10 calories of fossil fuel to make one calorie of food energy. Um, with beef, it's 55 calories, more or less. 
to, of fossil fuel energy to make one calorie of food energy. This is a, a Miksha a Henner photograph, aerial photograph. And those are feedlots. And this is the waste, this beautiful, colorful efflorescence over here. Um, it's a really perverse way to grow food, right? Um, and this is just one, one more of the externalities is the, um, this is the intensification of synthetic nitrogen, which of course leaches out of the soil and creates a hypoxic dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. It's, a, it's one of the major problems um, of our countryside pollution is uh, excess nitrogen. What was I gonna do next? Oh yeah, okay, so if you, <laughs> but you can grow things otherwise without fossil fuels by nurturing the right bacteria and fungus in your soil, and the best way to do that is compost, which is just diverting the waste stream of organic matter and uh, practicing an oxygenated decomposition. It has to be oxygenated. There is a kind of science to it. Um, so I had a worm bed, made a very large worm bed in my basement, and um, I put in it a five foot, oh, that's me, I'm sorry. Five foot by nine foot American flag and composted it. And um, this is my proposal for a new American agriculture that would be um, practiced in collaboration with um, little things, worms and bacteria and fungus. And these are my externalities, great soil from my garden. So I want to elevate uh, people's understanding of soil. So I did a big project in Germany um, for the last document, actually. Um, sorry, ice. <laughs> um, so I proposed soil as a basis for an economy. Um, like as, like, you know, like gold or petrodollars. Um, I'm proposing soil, so I, I wanted to actually materialize this abstract thing, money. Um, so I made those coin forms, uh, which is a very ancient form uh, for money, and, um, and then I made ingots that um, we're used to see in gold, and I displayed it on a gilded panel of glass so that you see the gold and you see the ingot form, but they're reversed, right? Um, now, really the reason I wanted to propose an economy on soil is because I'm interested in the social relations because an economy is a social relation, right? And, um, and soil is too, soil is a practice. It's a social practice to, to maintain the soil. We practice agriculture as an extractive industry. We just take out, take out, take out. And soil needs to be nurtured, it needs to be replenished, and um, we're losing soil. Soil is an endangered common good. Um, and then of course I wanted to make some money notes, some currency, and um, so I, I made these drawings, and since we put our important people on the money, um, I put like people who'd really contributed to organic understanding of agriculture, a much more ecological understanding. This is uh, Jay Irving Rodale, who was a pioneer in the US. And then the, the money, um, the drawing spent some time in the soil because I liked that materiality. And um, I made about 43 of these with different figures. There's Rachel Carson down there, um, Lady Eve Balfour, Sir Albert Howard, uh, Laura Kutstera. Um, and then I started to add people who had kind of shifted our understanding of the human as one, only one actor in the great uh, bio system that is the planet. Uh, so of course Darwin appears in Kafka and um, here's Donna Haraway with her dog Cayenne. And there's uh, Lynn Margulis, one of my heroes. And then I started putting the creatures in, the creatures that are part of the, um, the soil food web. Um, and here is the installation. And you see out there that green column. Well, I worked with this designer, Ben Fritton, to make these really simple, really inexpensive vertical growing systems. This is a prototype, and that's six weeks later. Um, all food, 
Um, because here I am saying, well, we're going to make a money system out of something that anyone can make, soil. Um, but what if you don't have land? Because then there's real estate, right? So um, I wanted to include these. And there's, there's some of ours. We got a grant and um, put several of these all around the city, Castle. Um, OK, back to petroleum. Um, I'm almost done. Uh, the um, Gim, Gwim, Gwimchi people of First Nations of Canada, they the, call themselves the caribou people. And they say, we are caribou. We are the caribou. So this is how people identify themselves. And, it, and you'll find that in a lot of um, indigenous um, cultures, this, this feeling of like, I am the mountain. I am the river. And then um, my friend and I were asking, what are we? Well, we are petroleum. Um, this is petroleum. And petroleum also is a set of social relations, excuse me, that we're all part of. Um, so I wanted to express this. And I also, you know, I find it just heartbreaking that we're in the sixth great extinction that we know of in the history of the world, and we are the cause of it. Um, because I think of all that biodiversity that took millions of years to develop, and we're just squandering it, and it's so beautiful. I mean, it's, it's really what I get up for, is this variation of life uh, on Earth. And, um, so I made a library of tears. And um, of course, I can't point the finger at anyone else, right? I am part of petroleum, too. And um, so I made these. I worked with the glass blower to make these vessels, these tear-shaped vessels. And inside them are products and byproducts of petroleum refining, processing. Um, so we have like all kinds of things, like sulfur, this yellow one on the edge here. This is some water that's from the Athabascan River um, and mud from the Athabascan River up in the tar sands region of Canada. I have tar sands. I have sweet crude. And then I also put plants. And um, here's a guide, a key. This was like 29 feet, uh, about like 50 vessels. And some were handmade of different materials. And some refer to. Um, the plants and animals, the life that we're trading for our appetite for um, cheap energy. And then I had my, um, I commissioned my niece, who's an artist, Alex Pentecost Farron, uh, to make a wallpaper for me. And it's very faint because I didn't want to distract too much. But um, it has some of these like micro fossils. And it also has uh, this figure from Pe Pompeii this reading figure of um, Minander in the house of Minander. And um, so that was the key. Um, and that's it. That's what I got. <laughs>